Hi everyone, and thanks for tuning in. Today we have a different kind of video planned. I have one of our QSC amplifiers on the desk today. This is the PLX3102. Um, it's one from the Powerlight series from QSC. And we're gonna discuss what makes this series unique and the difference between a Class AB amplifier, a Class H amplifier and a Class D amplifier. Um, so. First, let's have a look at how most older, I think, and uh, the most normal amplifiers are made. So, in a normal scenario, you have your AC voltage coming in, and this goes to a huge transformer, which converts the AC line voltage, which is uh, 120 volts or 230 volts, depending on where you're from. Um, and this heavy bulky transformer turns it to a lower voltage for the amplifiers uh, for the amplifier section which powers the speakers um, so this voltage is reduced then it gets turned to DC uh, because your line voltage is AC and you need DC in the amplifier so there's a bunch of diodes which turns it into DC and then it goes to bank of capacitors which um, when the AC voltage on the input gets turned to DC it looks like this so the negative part of the sine wave gets converted to a positive wave so it looks like this and you can't power you can't switch this to make an audio signal because you have parts here here and here where there's no power available, so you need these capacitors and this stores the energy and then your voltage looks like this it's just steady DC voltage um, and this voltage gets sent to the transistors and the transistors get switched to um, make the audio signal which is well, yeah, <laughs> I messed it up, but um, the audio signal is just the harmonics of the music. It's just the music, the signal you're sending into the amplifier, but the waveform is way bigger because the amplifier adds gain. So the waveform gets bigger and is way more powerful than what your audio source can provide. So this is how a normal amplifier works, but let's now pop the cover of this our light amplifier and have a look at how this one works. So one of the first things you might notice, I mentioned this big bulky transformer. As you can see, there is no big bulky transformer. It's also not hiding under this cover under this cover are just the heat sinks for the two pairs of stereo channels um, so yeah there's no big heavy bulky transformer there is only one transformer in this amplifier and it's this one this is actually a choke to limit the current because when you first turn on the amplifier with the switch on the front these capacitors have to charge up and if this choke wouldn't be here they would charge up instantly which would cause a huge peak and draw huge current from the AC source and very likely pop a breaker so they are charged through this choke which limits the input current and charges the capacitors relatively slowly um, so yeah there's no big bulky transformer there's only this small transformer so how does this work 
the input voltage comes to the stroke and gets rectified to DC. On this heatsink are um, four diodes and they are arranged like this. So you have your AC voltage coming in here, which looks like this, and you have your DC voltage exiting here, so you have your positive here and your negative here, and the voltage that exits this uh, full bridge rectifier is what they call this diode configuration, looks like this. So that's what happens here, it gets rectified to AC. And this section here is the capacitor bank, which is this part of the amplifier. But we don't have this huge transformer. We have this very small transformer. And um, how does this work? They, the people discovered that if you switch the primary side, so the side where the power enters the transformer on a very high frequency, it's actually way more efficient and you can reduce the size of the transformer. So they use MOSFETs, which are on this heatsink, to switch the DC going into this transformer at a very high frequency. and the output of this transformer gets rectified again and it gets stored in this capacitor bank which as you can see is a large capacitor bank because this is what actually powers these transistors so this way these transistors can um, yeah, modulate the output to get the music signal um, and because you have this huge reserve you can also actually have peaks for example on a subwoofer array um, which exceeds the power that your uh, main supply can provide because the when you have a base heat for example uh, you can draw huge peaks from this capacitor bank and uh, they can slowly recharge after that base heat uh, just from the main supply so yeah what makes the power light amplifiers unique you don't have the heavy transformer but you do have a class H um, output stage. So it's not like a class D amplifier where you have MOSFETs switching at a very high frequency to make the um, music signal. So you still have the output transistors. This does mean that it's less efficient than a class D amplifier because in order to control the voltage going to the speaker, they are actually wasting the power that's not going through the speakers in these heat sinks. That's why there is a huge chunk of metal. It's to dissipate the heat. So these amplifiers actually run quite warm when you're using them on superfers because yeah, they are wasting the unused energy and you're not doing that with class D amplifiers. So that's one of the disadvantages from um, this kind of amplifier. But it's not a class AB amplifier, it's a class H amplifier. So this means that if you're running your subwoofers on low power on a class D amplifier, you would be wasting quite a lot of um, energy. And on a class H amplifier, um, you're not wasting that much energy online um, if you're running them on low power. And the reason for that is that... I'm just gonna draw another shitty sine wave again. So in a class AB amplifier, you have your line voltage. So let's say the transformer charges the capacitors to 70 volts. So this is our 70 volt line. And let's say you're running superfers and you actually 
are just playing a sine wave and it's on very low power so you, we are running in this region so you have let's say just five volts going to the speaker you have all this voltage drop that has to be dropped um, across the transistors so all of this power um, is wasted this is not really efficient because yeah like i said all this power is being wasted what a class h amplifier does which a class b amplifier a b amplifier can do it has um, multiple stages of the voltage so of the supplied voltage so this in this case it's a two-tier class h amplifier so it means there are two stages so i don't know what stage they use exactly in this series of amplifiers but let's say there's a second stage at 20 volts so if you're just running a small signal you're not pushing the amplifier to its max it uses 20 volts of line voltage going into the transistors feeding the transistors so only this part is being wasted so that's a lot less than this amount of energy being wasted but if you are playing louder so you're pushing the amplifier harder so it's providing more power and your signal gets bigger than this voltage it switches to the second tier so it switches to the 70 volt line and only yeah so it switches to the 70 volt line so it can provide enough power and then only this amount of power is being wasted until you push the amplifier to the full voltage so almost up to clipping and then your sine wave will look like this so it's using all of the power and actually being quite efficient and not wasting that much power you always have the internal resistance of the transistors so you will always be wasting power but this makes class H amplifiers more efficient than class AB amplifiers so yeah this was some tech talk about amplifiers I hope maybe you found this interesting if you have another opinion or if I maybe got something wrong because I'm not an expert on this kind of stuff um, please let me know in the comments and uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed thanks for watching Oh, oh.